Thanks, Goose. With the disbanding of Irrational Games, it's hard to know what the future will be for the Bioshock franchise, if any. The recently released two-part DLC for Bioshock Infinite Burial at Sea could in fact be its swan song. So getting into that bathysphere and heading back down to Rapture was bittersweet. I'm not so sure you'll like what you find. <laughs> Episode 1 takes us back to when Rapture was a thriving city. This time it delves even further into its 1940s setting with a kind of film noir atmosphere, where Booker is a private detective and Elizabeth the femme fatale. You can call me Elizabeth. Elizabeth tasks him with finding a young girl named Sally, and straight away you can see how this DLC aims to stitch the two stories of Rapture and Columbia together. It's so exciting, isn't it, being back in Rapture and seeing how all these narratives start to form a solid picture. The Bioshock franchise explores such complex storytelling ideas, so it's wonderful having some blanks filled and questions answered. Who are you? Name's DeWitt. This really is such a great setup for the DLC, isn't it? That film noir detective setting. And I find this game just so beautiful, so many stunning scenes. And the characters slip effortlessly into these roles. You'd do this one gratis, wouldn't you? I don't follow. Something tells me you will. I don't know, to be honest, it seemed kind of gimmicky to me. Oh, really? I thought it was beautifully done. Yeah, and I was really excited by all the promo material that I saw, but once it all started playing out, it just seemed like a series of really beautiful cliches. Many of the moments throughout episode one felt clumsily thrown together. It almost felt like at times I was on some haunted house theme park ride watching all of these random scenes take place. I think that's a bit of a trait with Bioshock, though. I quite like it. You're often on a tour of a city full of mystery and trying to piece together what happened through visual clues. Only this time you're armed with three games worth of knowledge, and these are the final puzzle pieces. Combat is similar fare to the previous games, only pared back a little bit. We need more time. Honestly, for me, episode one on the whole was pretty disappointing. One of your main objectives is to close a bunch of vents to try and lure Sally out, which felt a little pedestrian. There's not a whole lot of action, and the plasmids you have access to are pretty limited. That said, a lot of the quirks and mysteries of Rapture that had you scratching your head in the very first Bioshock are explained in this story, so that's really cool. I really liked it. I like seeing Rapture at the height of its glory. That was thrilling. But mostly Episode 1 serves as a solid and necessary foundation for Episode 2. Yes, and happily Episode 2 is a vast improvement on the first. It begins with an idyllic vision of Paris, which I think was my favourite part of the entire DLC. When I visit Paris, I expect it to look exactly like this. A hazy romantic glow, children playing, all hail the baguette, and Disney-style birds singing La Vie en Rose. I mean, this is that Bioshock wow factor I'd been waiting for. Yeah, it's brilliant, isn't it? But what's even better is playing as Elizabeth. That's a breath of fresh air. Episode 2 adopts a more stealthy approach. Yeah, lots of stealth takedowns and a more strategic approach to taking out a room full of enemies. What's going on? <laughs> I like that they mixed up the weaponry too. Elizabeth can wield guns, but she also picks up a crossbow with all manner of interesting bolts. It's a crossbow. Looks like the bolt delivers some kind of sleep agent. And you also need to be very careful about your limited supply of ammo, because for Liz, there's no one there to throw her extra when she needs it. Yeah, I loved this combat approach, but I was a little bit annoyed they waited till episode two to introduce it. It's great having all these cool gadgets, gas darts, noise darts. I mean tranquilizers, but I hardly got the chance to really use them in this two-hour episode. I guess these mechanics are pretty core to Elizabeth, so they had to hold out until episode two. And I do like that they thought about how she would fight differently. She's at a disadvantage in this installment, and she loses her ability to create tears, so her approach to combat is reflected in the fact that she's suddenly quite vulnerable. Yeah, I definitely enjoyed the combat more in the second half, but I also didn't feel threatened a whole lot. One of Elizabeth's plasmids even allows her to become invisible for a while. But again, much of the focus of Burial at Sea is on fleshing out that already complex story of the Bioshock world. Which is wonderful, it just meant that ultimately I was left feeling a little bit disappointed at the
the end. I think I just needed more time to properly enjoy it, and I wish the whole thing had been one long episode too. Mm. It's also a bit tricky to talk about without spoiling anything in the second short instalment, but there are some stellar reveals, and it's certainly exciting, and it will surprise you. Yeah, and those ah, no way moments will certainly feel rewarding for fans who've truly been invested in the intricacies of this world from the very beginning. I'm just not sure I feel the better for having played it. And that's only because I love Bioshock and I'm not sure this does it justice. Part of me wishes they'd just left things as they were at the end of Bioshock Infinite. I completely disagree. This DLC provides a much clearer setup and backstory to the world of Rapture before you even began your first adventure in Bioshock 1. And all of this plays into the cyclical nature of the universe. I agree with you that Episode 2 is definitely better than Episode 1, but I absolutely think this is worth a playthrough for fans of the series, so I'm giving it 8 out of 10 rubber chickens. Yeah, there definitely were parts of this that I loved, but it's also playing with fire a little bit. Delivering this DLC as potentially the final word we'll ever have on the Bioshock franchise, I'm not sure it's going to satisfy everyone. Yes, it answers a lot of questions, but it doesn't necessarily leave you with that feeling of resolution, so I'm going to give it 6.5. And now it's time for Goose to find out just what it takes to play at the highest level as he follows Team Avant-Garde through the National Call of Duty Championships. 